Okay, so I'm indeed also working in a cert and it's um, quite useful to know when data from your constituents has been leaked on the internet or when email accounts have been compromised or certain forums uh, where your users use their same email addresses of, of the work and perhaps the same passwords are leaked. Um, in other contexts, uh, we also have Xavier Mertens here, um, who um, started a s uh, similar projects before, um, and he he has a website who's uh, called LinkedIn.com, and over there he publishes uh, automatically all information, um, fancy information that was leaked on uh, on Pastebin. Um, so I'm quickly going to to three steps. So first, what is what is Pistman? So, um, as he said, it's a tool to monitor uh, websites like like Pastebin. Um, the Pistman itself monitors like seven or eight websites. Currently, it's um, it's built to be easily configurable, so you can easily add new websites. But it's not only to monitor, but it's also made to be uh, able to archive the sites. So every paste you see on a website, you can keep it and store it on your local disk. Um, that's kind of useful to keep copies of pastes which contains leaked information. They are usually deleted within hours or, or days. So when you have a copy, you can still do your work either analyzing the leaked data or um, incident handling. Um, so the tool itself um, has an alerting feature. Uh, so when you, you can configure searches um, based on regular expressions, and when it finds something that interests you, it can send you an email. Um, you can um, also configure the multi-threaded um, parts. So automatically the tool will start different threads for each uh, paste website, and you can configure how many parallel threads it will use to download each paste from each site. Um, but um, some sites implement some security measures like um, throttling and, and uh, etc. So there's also a feature to um, import a list of proxies and um, the tool will then automatically use uh, random proxies from your configuration file. And when a proxy is not working, after a few attempts, it will remove the proxy from the list, so it will still work and download the pastes. Um, you can also configure it to um, use random user agents. Uh, by default on the GitHub site, I deliver a list of 7,000 uh, user agents that are all real. So based on a, a log collection. Um, the tool has been built to enable to uh, add very easily new sites. So I will show a few examples. Um, when you run the tool, the tool is, is comment line based, um, but when you run the tool, you, you, you will see this output. Um, the first, when the program starts, you see that it immediately downloads the, um, the list of the last pastes uh, published on the site, and then it puts everything in, in buckets, and uh, each thread will process the buckets to download the paste in parallel. Um, when you have a hit for a search you programmed, you uh, also see an output that it found a hit for what you were searching for. So the a lot alerting part, um, it's uh, kind of easy for its, the configuration file is a YAML based. Um, so we have the search section with two points in here. So many options, uh, many parameters are optional. Um, so the first is a simple search for a domain name. It's based on a regular expression, so you can configure it to lower the chance of false positives. For example, in here I ask example.com, but um, everything before should not be a normal uh, letter. So that means that the main domain and the subdomains are included, but not uh, hello example.com. Um, uh, you can also put a description which is more user-friendly in emails and in logging. Um, but for some cases, you like to exclude things from the search. So if, for example, in the second line, I have a search for download, but I do not want to see the words porn, sex, or teen, uh, and I want to have at least four hits of the search keywords, and only then it will alert me 
uh, if it's available. Um, you can also configure um, the regular expression flags. So, for example, I had situations where I had to search for um, uh, data what, which was multi-line. Uh, so you just um, set the, the regex flag and uh, you can go even further. Uh, site itself is extremely easy to configure, so you can add your own site and share them, please. Uh, for Pastebin, you have the archive URL. That's the, the page that contains the list of the last, for Pastebin, I think it's like 50 or, or, or 80 uh, pastes. Um, the regular expression you want to use to extract the unique paste ID um, and uh, the URL where he should download that ID. There are also two parameters, update max and update min. That's to add some um, variable parts in the download. So it will download um, or uh, check for updates of the archive URL in a range between 30 and 40 seconds so that automated tools will have less chance to detect you. Unfortunately, monitoring websites like um, Pastebin is not easy. Um, you have rate limiting, so the solution was to add proxies uh, and, and user, -based spoofing, uh, user agent spoofing. Um, some websites don't have list of recent pastes, so there you're kind of a screwed, except if you have another source where you can import the pastes. Some pasties are password protected, then you also need the paste ID and a password. Uh, on some paste sites, um, there is no separate download page or download pages that require form submits. That means you can't simply download the page automatically. Uh, this, uh, the paste site has this example. And you can see that there's a unique uh, a confirmation key for each request. To solve this issue, I enabled a dynamic um, a configuration of, of downloads um, features. So for the paste site, I have a separate class in my configuration. That's in the YAML configuration. And in the um, Python code, uh, I simply create a class that in inherits from my main pasty class. And over there, I override the fetch pasty uh, function that downloads pasties. And uh, I simply download the original pasty uh, page, parse the right section, search for the confirmation string, submit a new f uh, the, the form, and get the real text-based pasty. Uh, why is it important to have text-based pasties? Because some pastes contain HTML characters, and if it's shown in HTML view, you have, um, they are usually um, uh, pre-parsed to be um, not interpreted by the browser, so then you, your regular expression searches won't work. So the tool has kind of a dynamic configuration uh, dynamic uh, class configuration. And um, the, the Python is, is really nice language because it's extremely dynamic. You can use variable functions, you can use variable classes. Um, so in here, I simply check if the class name variable is set in my YAM configuration. And then I search in a global pool of all classes um, if that uh, class exists, uh, and uh, I create an instance of the class. So it's extremely easy within Python to use kind of a dynamic classes or dynamic functions. Um, to solve one of the other problems, One of the other problems is that the, um, some sites don't have a list of recent pastes. But for example, they have a generation algorithm for the paste ID. For example, one, two, three, four, five, or A, B, C. So I plan to add also a dynamic um, archive um, list last pasties uh, class so that you could even program uh, extra classes where algorithms could be program so you could also download pastes from such sites. For the password protected um, pasties, I also have a solution uh, in mind, is that I will provide classes to download the pastes and an interface where you can just submit the URL. He will automatically detect of what paste site the URL is, and then he will download the paste and search for the alert keyword and archive it if you want to have archived.
So that was a very fast overview of Spiceman. Um, in usually search, use this tool um, uh, to have copies of the list that paste and be alerted automatically when something interesting happens on the paste sites. Um, so uh, the code is on GitHub. Feel free to um, fork it to send in bug reports to fix um, bugs um, or to program new paste sites or inform me if you have some specific paste sites you know that is not yet uh, present in the configuration, in the full configuration, um, and feel free to, to contribute it. If you also have, also monitor paste sites uh, and have a list of regular expressions that are interesting, uh, feel free also to share them and uh, I could uh, put them on the GitHub sites. Um, so maybe there are any questions? Hi, um, I'm going to ask an annoying question. Where do you legally stand on downloading these contents and archiving them unless they're on a Creative Commons license or likewise license to be published for anyone's use? Um, I'm going to answer with a standard, I'm not a lawyer, but um, there are two parts. First of all, the code. This code is just any software, you can use it as you want. Um, about the data that it's uh, published on websites, um, when it's published on the internet, it's kind of a public data. You still have kind of a copyright. If you downloaded it on your own system, it's kind of a your problem. If you share the data you downloaded, then you have a more complex answer. So as long as you download things which are not illegal to possess, um, I mean, I don't know if it's illegal to possess a list of usernames and passwords, uh, I don't know if it's illegal to possess some sample code someone pasted on the internet, like programming code or HTML code. Um, I don't think that's illegal. I think the only risk you have of archiving uh, paste sites is when you start sharing the pastes you saved on your disk. So I wouldn't expect any problems as long as you don't share what you saved on your disk. Any work published, but you have a copyright protection. So when you publish something on pasta beans, it's like if you publish a book, you have you are protected for the copyright. So it's only the word distributions, like uh, he just explained, that is uh, problematic, not uh, the fact to archive it. Uh, for example, Xavier on the leakedin.com has a kind of a WordPress blog where he automatically uh, posts uh, uh, leaked data, and he has an abuse email address where he processes all abuse request. So when someone asks, please take this offline, he takes it offline. So that's another way to still partially publish data, but still be in the kind of a legal zone. Um, but of course, if you publish your data, be careful you don't publish credit cards or other protected data. There's still over there. There was a question there, or yeah, over there. Um, have you already tried uh, to predict uh, URLs for uh, the next, I don't know, uh, 50 archives? Uh, pardon? Have I tried to? Um, on uh, sites that uh, don't have archives, uh, you said so. Um, they use uh, generators uh, or uh, algorithms uh, to generate uh, the next IDs. Uh, did you uh, try to predict uh, the next um, 50 pastes? Um, there was one site which was kind of easy, just an incrementing algorithm of uh, AZ09. So that's something, when you look at five pastes, you immediately see it. Um, I have not studied the algorithms of Pastebin or any other paste mm -hmm. sites. Um, however, I think combining it with a search engine, um, like uh, any favorite search engine, and searching for specific strings on the search engine and feeding that into um, the Pistman would be an interesting way to find things you can't find otherwise. Mm -hmm. And also um, uh, to search in paste for URLs 
Sometimes people publish uh, pastes with links to other pastes, so then you can also discover things you didn't know yet. Uh, of course, the tool also keeps um, uh, in memory lists uh, for, for efficiency, uh, a list of uh, recent downloaded pastes, so it do doesn't download the same ID twice. Um, you can also store it in a database, um, not the complete paste, but references of uh, what has been found and what paste and what URL, etc. Okay. Um, so there, it's still a tool in progress, but it's it's big. It's kind of a stable right now. 